taken a blacksmith's cross or Frederick's cross out of this railroad spike that I have. Um, so this is about <clears throat> it's about a five eighths railroad spike. Now this is an antique, so I'm gonna repurpose this into a cross. So I'm gonna shred the, uh, cut this tip, cut this end, um, cut in this way, then cut in that way, and then open it up and fold it open. So, all right, just gonna take you along real quick, show you how I make uh, my crosses. All right, so I went ahead and cut it one side and then I cut it this side and they just lapse each other about almost an inch. So you can kind of see. So what will happen is when I heat this up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fold this end's gonna go this way, and this end's gonna go that way. This bottom end's gonna go this way, and this other end's gonna go that way. And so it opens up to form a cross. All right, so let's go ahead and get this heated, and go ahead and open it up. All right, so. I did alter my anvil stand um, just a little bit. Went ahead and added about an inch and a half just to get better stance. Um, and you can see I went ahead and mounted the actual anvil to the base a little bit differently. That's working out pretty good. All right, so when I open up these crosses, I like to use my hardy tool. going to give me an edge that I can press down on to open up that those two parts of the middle. All right, there we go. Go ahead and open this up. So, one side open, I'm going to go ahead and throw back in the other side.
Ve so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it so that opening's a little bigger. Actually, I might throw the drift down center a little bit.
right, so I'm going to basically elongate that bottom piece and then hammer it down, give it some texture. And way to do it is to cut it so the slices overlap either on one side of the bar or the other side of the bar. Okay, it allows <clears throat> so it allows this half and this half, to, it was originally right here. And so when you fold it open, you got two short halves and two long halves. And then you just cut, you cut that the extra long half off. So in the case that I'm doing right now, I kind of placed that overlap in the center this part is was more towards the center so it kind of e it evenly distributed so that's why I was elongating the bottom piece. Let's, let's see if I can get some texturing going on make that look a little fatter make it look a little more even to look a lot more even. I'm going to do lighter blows on the sides and the top uh, just so it gets indentations but so it doesn't deform. So obviously this the top part's a little more thicker. <laughs> but go ahead and
pretty nice piece actually. So, actually happy about this one. Yeah, for a moment there, I was like, whoa, what are you doing? Starting to look like an old rugged cross. So this was antique steel too, which makes it pretty neat. What I'm gonna do is hit it with the grinder. Just lightly and then um, drill a hole up top and there you go. Give you a close look. So, ended up turning out pretty good. So, I got a 1 8 hole on top. Um, like I said, this is an antique railroad spike. Went ahead and repurposed it. All right. So yeah, uh, Frederick's Cross, Blacksmith Cross, um, if, you, if you haven't made one of these yet, and you're a blacksmith, I'd give it a shot, because they're actually pretty fun to make. There's so many different varieties that you can do. Um, you can throw twists in them, uh, different textures. Um, kind of like an endless endless varieties you can put scrolls you can put back plates on them um, you can do decorative work but um, whoa almost dropped it <laughs> but yeah that turned out pretty well all right if you enjoyed this and you like this content just let me know uh, like share subscribe um, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.